going on guys? This is Walt from Midwest Gaming. Uh, Terrence over at TGG Gaming had uh, requested that I do a deck profile on Lunalite Tri Brigades. Um, apparently somebody on uh, one of the videos that his uh, shop posted uh, requested for one, so um, here I am to oblige. So uh, yes, this deck is Lunalite Tri Brigade with the DPE engine. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, first and foremost, the uh, Lunalite engine. Uh, Tiger, freshly off the ban list, God bless. This card is the heart and soul of the deck in my honest opinion. Uh, in my honest opinion, it's, it's just fact. Um, this, card, this card, you know, reborn is not a hard once per turn, so you can keep bouncing it back and forth and make rank, uh, rank four plays or link up and do a lot of crazy stuff. Um, you play one Lulite Emerald Bird for the name, uh, two Yellow Marden for the uh, bounce effect, and you know just another name, uh, Kaleido Chick. This uh, this card's nuts. It's you know free foolish burial as a cost. It's amazing how many people still want to ash this because they've completely forgotten that uh, this uh, send effect is a cost, but you know. They'll learn, hopefully. Probably not. Um, next, the uh, Tribrigade stuff. So, one Kit, two Karis, three Nerval, and three Fractal. Um, this ratio might seem weird to anybody that was used to playing Tribrigade for the most of uh, 2021, um, because you usually would want to max out on Kit um, for the dumb effect. Uh, in truth, Kit doesn't really serve that huge of a purpose other than extending uh, to more Tri-Brigade names, um, or yeah, just uh, materials for Tri-Brigade uh, effects, sending off of a uh, Fractal, but um, you know, we just run the one in here because you know, it's a different name and it's still, it's still decent at what it does. You just don't need it as much um, in this version of the deck. Um, then two extenders, uh, Raid Raptor Singing Lanius, and then Blackwing Zephyros the Elite. Um, Singing Lanius, there, both of these are cards you search off of the Raid Raptor Force Strix in the extra deck. Um, this one, you know, is just a extender if you already opened this, but you usually want to get Zephyros uh, the Elite into your graveyard somehow in some way, or into your hand to dump off for effects. Um, this thing is, you know, yet another thing that bounces Tiger back to hand so you can keep using uh, its effect. Um, insane. Uh, hand traps. I'm still on the fence about what to run for hand traps in this deck. Just because, you know, you got people telling me that, you know, a lot of hand traps are mostly ineffective this format. There's some that are better than others, but I just went by... Uh, some old standbys for um, this type of deck. So, uh, three Ash, and then the uh, Cyframe uh, Gamma package. Um, this uh, this comes in handy because you have a lot of uh, spells on the deck and effects um, in the graveyard that search, so um, you're usually activating those when you don't have a monster on the field, and if they try to Ash or Lancia you or whatever, Lancia, Lancia against this deck is very annoying. Um, but you can still play through it, but if you have game in hand, you can at least free yourself for the turn. Um, and then the DPE package, you know, bricks. Um, and then for spells, uh, one fire formation tanky. Um, people, uh, don't, uh, remember the fact that the, uh, Loon Lights are all beast warriors. Um, so this is really nice. You run a Tiger King in the extra deck, Bell. Uh, I'll get to that eventually. So you set this directly from deck. Um, and, you know, it's just another thing that you can pop off of DPE or uh, uh, Double Dragons to uh, send cards. So it's got a lot of uses. Um, two Fusion Destiny, because we can only run two. Um, one Foolish Burial, and then three Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, this card's incredible because uh, the Lunalite spells and trap that you 
run in this deck have effects in the graveyard to do things, so you usually want to get them there somehow in some way. Uh, and then Loonlight uh, spells, or spell, I guess we, we just run the uh, Loonlight perfume. Um, Nine once per turn, monster reborn for your Lunalite monsters, and then in the graveyard, you banish it, discard a card, search for a Lunalite card. Um, it's a way to get Zephyros in the graveyard, it's a way to get uh, Nerval into the graveyard if you've drawn one. Um, it does a lot of cool things. It's a really obscene card. And then I, I don't have these on me because I've lent them out, but I'm also running three Pot of Prosperity in the deck. Uh, I'm still on the edge on if I actually want to play that or not, but sometimes you do have, you know, pretty bricked hands uh, where you can't even uh, do your normal triviad opener. So digging for cards is pretty good. It does conflict a little bit with uh, the Farajit, which you tend to use more often than not with this version, but um, I'd much rather have a play started than relying off of a Farajit to cycle me a card. It's also pretty decent for DP package too. Um, traps, just two. Uh, Loon Knight Serenade Dance, and then one Tribrigade Revolt. Um, Serenade Dance is the one that uh, summons directly from the deck. Can be pretty useful. Really nice if you have an Emerald, or if you can summon out an Emerald Bird and you have a um, way too many Loon Light cards in hand that you need to pitch. Um, and then Revolt because Soul Charge is a cool card, I guess. Um, the main deck is 42 cards. Um, I would like to get it down to uh, uh, 40, but can't. Uh, I'm still I'm still working with tweaks on this deck and still deciding if I actually want to play this version of um, Little Light Tribrigade 2. Um, the difference is being if uh, you want to play the uh, uh, the Cyber Dragon Infinity package with the Raid Raptor uh, rank up spell, or um, if you want to play the DPE package. Um, still trying to figure if which one's better than the other. Don't know. Um, so for the extra deck, we run a bunch of uh, rank four exceed monsters. So uh, Brotherhood of Firefist Tiger King. This one sets the tanky directly from the deck. Very nice. Um, one Abyss Dweller, um, one Raid Raptor Force Strix, so this is the thing that ser searches out your uh, Singulaneus or your uh, um, Zephyros. Uh, some people are running more than one of these, and I, I think that's fine. I just, if I, if I'm searched Zephyros, I usually don't need the, uh, the uh, Singulaneus or whatever, so it's up to you. If you're playing the Cyber Dragon Infinity build, you actually have to run two of these in order to make the Infinity, but um, yeah. And then Zeus, because we're running Exceed Monsters. Um, for the links, uh, Tribrigate links, so one Bear Bloom, two Farajits, one Rugal, one Shrag. Um, I've been toying around with the possibility of trying to fit another Shrag in here, or um, something else other than the other uh, Farajit, but uh, in testing, this two of them have come up multiple times, more so than the Shrag, and you only ever, you only usually summon this off of uh, Revolt anyway, and no other time, but yeah. Um, and then for the rest of the links, uh, we have one Double Dragon Lords, because it's obscene, <laughs> quick play bounce. Uh, one Verte Anaconda for your DVE plays. Uh, one Rausvelger. Um, graveyard resources are seemingly pretty important in this format, whether it be uh, Drytrons or um, whatever. So this uh, this card does come up, and it's a good uh, um, it's a good piece to link away for access code. Um, speaking of the access code, I also have lent that out. Um, so this is supposed to be an access code talker. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't have it here with me. Um, and then one Appaloosa. Um, some 
if you open up a good enough hand, you can usually end out with uh, Appaloosa, DPE, and Abyss Dweller. That's usually the um, best combo um, you can end out with. Um, sometimes you get into this, sometimes you don't. It's fine. Um, and then one uh, DPE because he's insanely powerful. All right. And then for the side deck, um, this is the first, uh, this is the first week of the format. So I have no, uh, no reservations on, you know, what is good in the, uh, side deck right now or not, because this is a, going to be another wild format for us. But, uh, this is what I tried out and it actually worked pretty decently. Um, token collector, uh, to mainly deal with sword soul. Um, but I suppose the, uh, adventurers, uh, do put out a token as well, so that's cool. Um, Lancia. I think, I think in a lot of people will probably agree that Lancia is probably one of the more important cards in this format, um, mainly because of, uh, Phantom Knights. Um, but there's a decent amount of decks out there that, you know, use Banishing as a cost to keep their combos rolling. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Lancia is pretty insane right now. Um, back row removal, uh, one Harpy's Feather Duster, one Lightning Storm, one Red Reboot, because uh, this is close enough to back row removal, and then uh, three evenly matched. Um, evenly matched, I think, is pretty insane right now. Um, as long as their end combo doesn't send up, set up an Omni Negate, or you have a way to, uh, deal with that Omni Negate. Um, and then just get rid of everything. Um, these are mainly here because Elich is pretty prevalent right now. And then for the last three, because I had no idea what else to put in, I just put in some Solemn Judgments. Um, this did come up for me um, uh, uh, last week, and I thought, you know, it was it seems fine enough, but I'm pretty sure there's another way to, or a better way to go about this. Maybe put in uh, Ghost Ogres on the side, who knows. Um, but yeah, cool. Oh, with that being said, that uh, is the deck profile. Um, make sure you subscribe to Midwest Gaming on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to TGG Gaming, um, which is where you'll be watching this uh, deck profile. Check out TGG Gaming on uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you much.